Today in this video, we'll be sharing 10 essential modeling tips for beginners looking to master Blender modeling. So let's get started. I plan to show some other artists and channels work during this video, so I'll make sure to credit and link any resources below. Tip number one is to use custom normals. Custom normals are essential for achieving realistic and high quality shading on your models. You can use the data transfer modifier or the normal edit modifier, for example, to drastically alter how the normals behave on your model. Weighted normal can help you correct normals as well. And of course, auto smoothing normals and changing the degrees can help with things like hard surface modeling and getting sharp edges. A great example of how normals can be utilized are in examples like this, where in non-photorealistic renderings, you can transfer simpler normals to your more complex models and get more realistic, smooth tune lighting. Tip number two falls a little bit more into animation, but it's still relevant, and that's utilize the power of shape keys. Shape keys allow you to create and store multiple versions of a mesh of shape within a single object. Use them for complex animations, blend shapes, or morph targets. And don't forget that you can use drivers to control these as well dynamically. Tip number three is to use advanced modifier stacking, combining multiple modifiers in a specific order to create advanced effects and non-destructive workflows. For example, use the solidify modifier followed by the bevel modifier to create complex, clean, and adjustable hard surface models. Certain add-ons such as Curtis Holtz generating add-on and hard surface modeling add-ons use complex modifier stacks. I actually used a complex modifier stack from another tutorial in my short film to generate all of the rocks on this island. Tip number four is to model with precision, and this kind of comes as a two-parter. Part one is that you need to be modeling at scale. It used to be that Blender didn't have a proper scaling system, but now it does, so we need to be using real-world units in order to properly ensure that our scenes dictate good scaling. This is especially important when modeling things like cars, objects, or architectural visualization, but it also plays a role in composition as well because it affects how the camera will look at things with depth of field and how lights will affect things as well. One way to help keep things at scale is to use the snap and precision tools and features that Blender has. These include helping you align with vertices, edges, faces, and ensuring that your models are snapping on the grid and that you're keeping things at scale and connected to one another with real world units. Tip number five is to utilize retopology techniques. Retopology is the process of creating a new optimized mesh from a high poly sculpt or model. Using tools like the poly build and shrink rock modifiers can help you create clean and efficient topology for free. However, there's also tools such as Retopaflow that make the process much more easy and seamless, and you can check out that add-on link in the description below as well. Tip number six is to consider mastering geometry nodes. This depends on what styles you are going for, but geometry nodes is a powerful procedural modeling system in Blender. You can learn how to create complex parametric models by combining different nodes and attributes to generate intricate, customizable designs, and everything can be procedural and generative. This is how I generated the forest scenes in my short film by creating a complex node system. So there's a lot of power here that can really unlock your creative potential. This is technically a texturing tip, but you're probably going to be texturing your model and this will play a large role in using advanced UV mapping techniques. So you can improve your UV unwrapping skills by learning advanced techniques like UV island packing, overlapping UVs for repeating details, and utilizing multi-tile UV layouts for high resolution textures. This is something that I do when I'm texturing my environments and I want to keep everything on one texture set. I would recommend Deco's UV unmapping tutorial. I'll link to that below. And there's also the amazing add-on here. It's a bit pricey, but it's well worth the money and it will help pack all of your islands way more efficiently, even helping you do things like stacking UVs. Tip number eight, leverage the power of grease pencil. Now you may be thinking of this as a 2D tool, but the grease pencil tool allows you to draw directly onto your 3D models. So you can use it for sketching out ideas, planning topology, or creating stylized hand-drawn models. So it has a lot of possibilities. I've even have this add-on here that I created where I can convert my grease pencils to curves and then run it through my geometry node setups here to kind of help me within my animations so that I don't have to model or do complex rigs on some of these elements. Tip number nine, make sure that you're optimizing your high poly models. High poly models can slow down your workflow and your render times drastically. 
learn how to use the decimate modifier, LOD systems, and manual mesh reduction techniques to create optimized high quality models. This goes with the other tip that we mentioned about retopologizing, but you can also use the decimate modifier to quickly drop things negatively. And if you haven't heard of LODs, this is something commonly used in games where depending on the distance from the player, it will swap out models or drop the geometry to lower model sections. So a great example of this is that if you have a forest, the trees in the background can be a lower resolution version of the model. That's something that I did in my fairy scene here, for example. Now, the last one is kind of a culmination of some of the tips that we've mentioned, and that's mastering non-destructive modeling techniques. Non-destructive modeling allows you to make changes to your model without permanently altering the base mesh. This approach provides flexibility and efficiency in your workflow. Learn to use modifiers, shape keys, and other non-destructive techniques such as geometry nodes to make your modeling process a bit more dynamic and adaptable. Of course, this won't be possible for all situations, and some other softwares are actually better at doing procedural type modeling. However, whenever you can utilize this type of techniques or format, it can really help you in terms of kind of going backwards and making alterations later on without having to redo entire things. Of course, that's easier said than done, but as usual, I'll be doing a lot of tutorials on this channel covering such topics that will help you with those type of workflows. What did you think of this video? Did you find these 10 tips helpful? I was thinking about doing more. Do you have any tips you'd like to share in the comments below? Let me know. And again, thank you for watching.